Hi everybody, welcome back to another video at Smithsdale Farm. It's been a couple of months since we released our last video and there's a couple of reasons why. Firstly, I started a new job which has been commanding quite a lot of my time. Um, and for those of you who don't know, videos actually take somewhere between kind of 8, 10, 12 hours sometimes to edit. So in amongst a brand new job, it's been a little bit difficult to actually get around to editing. And unfortunately, over the Christmas break, we got this flu that's going around. So we were down and out for about three weeks. Don't know so. if you've heard of it. It's quite contagious. <laughs> so we were planning to be down here like before Christmas or over Christmas. And basically we couldn't come down either through restrictions or for actually being sick. We're both fine. Um, and we both were fine, just extremely tired. Um, but yeah, so that's been a, another contributing factor. But now that the weather's getting better and we're going into spring, we're hoping to come down to the land a lot more and start putting out much more regular updates again. So in this video, we'll be going through some of the things that we did before Christmas and um, the last time we were down here. So here are some of the projects that we got up to. So in all of our recent videos, we've been starting to work on the cabin and we are going to continue with that. And it is something that we're putting a lot of time and energy into so that we can hopefully move into there next spring and then we can start working on the house properly. But it's December and it's starting to get really, really cold at night. And the roof of this building is all of the original natural materials. So we have the canes, we have the tiles on top, but there's no insulation and there are huge holes that just go straight outdoors. So in this video, we're going to be practicing a new skill that we have never ever tried before, but we figured, how hard can it be? Telling in a letter, stamping mail it out. We did our best, couldn't have done better. I think we Not should be proud. But you held me down when I was living up. Back and forth, but never together. So I'll stand up and walk out. So we've been playing around with the ratios and things a little bit just to see kind of what consistency works best and um, how we can kind of make it fit in all of the gaps. Uh, we tried uh, three parts to two parts, three parts of the plaster mix and then uh, two parts of water, but it's just a little bit too hard. And when we looked online, the recommendation is actually for one-to-one, -one, uh, which is why we tried a little bit thicker first to see, seeing as we were putting it above our head and, and kind of gravity and we needed to fill the gaps, we thought we might need it a little bit more solid, but we've actually found that the one-to-one -one works very well. Uh, so point learnt, just follow what it says on the, on the instructions. It's filling really well. This is a bit that's already dried. Um, it's, it's kind of filling all those gaps, which is exactly what we want. We don't expect it to be um, a kind of clean, perfect finish. There's no need for that because it's not going to be the finished roof. So we're just trying to do as best we can, cover as much as we can, and we're getting reasonably far already. Who thought plastering was hard, eh? Why would you pay someone to do that? We are on day number three of the roof. Um, and we've managed to get about half of it done so far. We've got to head back to Barcelona tonight, so we're going to see how much we can get done in the next couple of hours. And then, because it's been a bank holiday, it's actually midweek, and we're going to be back at the weekend to try and finish it off. In some ways, and how different they are in others. One big difference is that most during this time, Australia continued on an upward trajectory, using its wealth to create more health and productivity in its workforce and its health and productivity to create more wealth, a virtuous cycle of the highest moral order. Between Nantes and Costa Rica, and one up from Slovenia, it's still common to hear US politicians say, without any justification, that the United States 
this part of the roof here is actually proving to be really difficult because it's so uneven and there's some massive holes that we need to try and fill. So we're basically kind of filling in the gaps where possible with a few um, sticks beforehand and then trying to, to kind of get those stuck in place. But this one really isn't going on easily at all. I mean, some of these gaps are huge. Um, and you can see where, if we look at it kind of straight on, you can see where it's really kind of wavy up and down like this with the reeds. And if we look at one of the other ones, like here, for example, it's much, much, much straighter because the canes that they've used are straighter themselves or they've tied them in better, I don't know. So it's really annoying to do this one as kind of one of the last ones before we leave because um, it's one of the most difficult, but just got to keep getting on with it. Just come to the end of a few days down here and finished plastering half the roof, more or less. Um, so we went through four bags of plaster and plastering between the between the reeds and already we can feel the difference um, so I'll tilt it backwards a bit and you can see the daylight through the roof that we were dealing with beforehand um, and what that means is in the winter when we've got candles or the stove on it just doesn't heat up any heat we have just goes straight out the roof it makes it quite cold um, but already standing here it was quite a windy day um, and already standing here, you feel the difference being in this side of the room to the other side of the room. Um, so we've just got three and a half, four and a half uh, things left to do. Um, and then the whole room will be done. But already we see the difference and yeah, we're very happy with the result. We're just about to head back to Barcelona before we come back down in a couple of days but we're just going to quickly um, get some of our olives off this tree. We have two types of olives and in this video I'm going to show you what we've been doing to preserve and brine them uh, and the different kinds that we've got. We have Farga and we have Morande and the Morande, forgive the pronunciation, that's probably terrible. Uh, they're these kind of big round fat ones. Um, the Farga are a bit more kind of um, long in their shape and these ones have just ripened so they're nice and black and we're going to put those into a new type of brine. We're trying all sorts of different variations to see what it is that we like or don't like. I actually typically don't like olives but we'll see maybe I find a way of preserving them that I actually enjoy and I like to eat that would be great seeing as we've got so many of them who knows. We'll probably get round to olive oil next year. I'm not sure we're going to be in a good enough state to kind of organise getting them down to the press this year. Uh, we don't have a trailer or anything yet, so really we need something like that to do it properly. Um, but yeah, so keep watching and I'm going to share the recipes that we've been following so far, the different methods that we're following, um, and then hopefully in a few months time we can show you what they actually taste like. So just to show you what we're picking, so the olives come in various shapes, sizes and quality. So they have like a little fly that comes through in the summer and um, lays a little leg in them and often this turns them like this. And an easy way to tell if there's um, something in your olive is it has like a little hole in it. It's been pricked by, by, by the fly. So what we're looking for is uh, a smooth ones. So not that one, um, that don't have any marks on them. I mean, that would, would probably be okay because it doesn't look like, like it's been bitten at any point. Um, but it's not the nicest and we have enough that we can be picky. So here's two more and you can see they don't really have any bite marks on them. Skin's nice and firm and they should be okay.
down at the land after a couple of days back in Barcelona and ready to get on with the rest of the ceiling. So we've got about three of the roof spaces to do. There's one at the end that we're not quite sure how much we're going to be able to reach or not. So we'll have to figure something out about that. But we're hoping we'll get the majority of it done today. It's a big old world. So what did I miss? California girl Oregon bliss Alright It's a matter of time And it's a matter of heart Take a look at my So we've just finished plastering the rest of the roof. It's not the prettiest work in the world, but it's filled all the holes. So the wind isn't coming in, the heat isn't going straight out. Yesterday we had some candles lit while we were having dinner and things, and the heat was staying inside and it was much more comfortable than it had been previously. And last night we even had to take some clothes off, so some of the thermal layers that we had in the tent, um, just because it was too warm. So we already feel the difference. And this weekend has been a particularly windy weekend. So it's been a real, um, a good test. Um, for for the difference it's going to make for us. It's a picture perfect kind of world with you, world with you. And the truth is I This morning I'm going to be processing the carrot pods that I picked at the weekend. Yesterday I pre-prepared them by boiling them for about 10 to 15 minutes and then I left them in the water as it cooled overnight. This is to soften the pods. Now it should be much easier to separate them into two halves, pop out all of the little seeds and then get the pods ready for drying and blitzing. From the moment that we met, you're worth the wait. Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know. Mm -hmm. Talk for hours and never slept. Two silhouettes on the concrete steps We watched the sun as it slowly crept From the horizon to the place we met Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know So it's a few days later and the carobs have all dried out. They're all now pretty dry and crispy when you break them. So that means that they're definitely ready to now be blitzed. So you could just use a food processor or something like that, but I'm going to use the Vitamix and blitz it up into a powder. In the end, it took about 20 hours or so on a very low heat in the oven to dry them out. There was still a little bit of moisture in there, so I then just left them on the trays inside the oven for kind of one to two days to fully dry out so that they were totally dry and crispy. You don't want to have any moisture at all inside these because if you blend them with some moisture in, you'll end up getting more of a paste than a powder, and that's not what we want. So now I've sifted these into the powder and the kind of pieces, the chips. So 
the powder the powder tastes um kind of sweet um a little bit chocolatey um but it's got a slightly different taste a bit um caramelly um a little bit like a kind of cinder toffee taste behind it that like bonfire toffee um and then the pieces are they're relatively small um but they're kind of like uh chocolate chips they're a little bit um they're a little bit kind of chewy um they're not super hard and crispy or um or like very hard on your teeth to eat they're a little bit chewy a little bit kind of soft a little bit like when you use dates in cooking dried dates but again exactly the same kind of flavor but a little bit more bitter than the uh the kind of powdered version i guess that a lot of the sweetness the kind of sugar crystals um are in that powder rather than in the kind of dried pod pieces um so yeah really interested to try this out put this into some recipes and see how it tastes out of 1.2 kilos of fresh carob picked from the tree we have 510 grams of the powder and uh, 475 grams of the chips would you be interested in seeing any of the recipes if you would, let me know in the comments down below, or maybe you've got some really nice recipes that you can share with me and I'll give those a go too. First of all, I'm going to treat myself by making a dairy-free hot chocolate, a kind of hot cocoa drink with the carob. Sit down and enjoy that on this kind of cold, miserable, rainy Barcelona day. I may have just found my new favorite Christmas drink. So if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. We recently hit the 4,000 subscriber mark. So thank you to every single one of you who has started to watch our journey and follow along in this process. And thanks so much to everybody who's leaving us comments as well. We read all of them and we try to get back to everyone. Um, lots of people asking loads of different questions. Um, so we're trying to kind of respond to everybody and, and give you all the answers to those as well. And thank you everyone who's been leaving us comments asking how we are, and where we've been because I know we've been away for some time thank you very much everyone who's uh, showed a little bit of concern for that if you have enjoyed this video then please give us a big thumbs up it really helps the algorithms to push our video out to more people and hopefully find more like-minded people who are interested in doing what we're doing in the next video we're going to be back on the land and cracking on with more projects here and we're going to be back to the cabin build as well so we'll see you on the next one